happy Monday. I'm going to do a quick little blog video post this week on communication tips. I know everybody struggles with how do I communicate what I really want to say and how do I stay in good relationship with people when I'm trying to do it. We all have struggles with communicating with people that we care about and with people that we have to interact with that we kind of have trouble having peaceful communications with. So there's always, oh hey Andy, it's so good to see you. Um, we always have certain people that we have trouble communicating with, but we need to get our thoughts across. So I'm going to give you four tips on how to better communicate with those that you need to and those that you desperately want to. So here's my four tips. The first one is don't try to communicate when you're angry. It doesn't work. Um, the, the worst thing that you can do is say a bunch of things that you're going to need to fix later. So people's frontal brain does not operate when angry. It all goes back to the limbic system, which is basically primordial man's brain. I mean, it's caveman brain all over the place. Fight, flight, freeze. Nobody's thinking. Nobody's listening, more importantly. So when you get angry, you say a lot of things you shouldn't say, and you're not listening to each other. So don't do it. Don't try to communicate when you're angry. Take a step back, calm down, and wait until you are capable of listening. And wait, just as importantly, until that person is capable of listening to you. So when you're in a place where you can actually effectively communicate is when no one is full-on, blood-red, angry. Your heart rate goes up. And that adrenaline gets going and nobody's listening. So try not to communicate during those times when you're most angry. So the second step is once you've calmed down, you want to make sure that you're able to really listen. Not just listen to what people are saying, but listen beyond their upset words, their, their emotion to the vulnerable things that are within them. Their need. People who come, customers, clients, people in the marketplace, even your family and friends, will say things on the surface that are actually a defensive mask veiling what their real need is. Try to listen past the front of what they're saying, the, the things they're saying, to what's behind it, to the need that's with them. Is this person scared? Is this person feeling vulnerable? Is this person insecure? How can you address that need? Once you get past the, the stuff that's between you, that's separating you, and you listen for the need and you address that need, the person you're communicating with will feel it. For example, if you notice that someone you're dealing with in business or in your family or in your, your personal relationships is feeling insecure, if you can address that and say, hey, I realize that this is not a good place for you to be in. And I just want to do anything I can to help you feel more comfortable about this. I want to help you feel like you can get through this day and feel secure about tomorrow. So let's work together to make it so that this can be a good experience for you. That diffuses all the anger that's between you and it helps you begin to communicate. Because once that person feels you are allied with what their need is, then they start listening to you. So you can communicate to them and then you can hear them. So sometimes it takes you listening beyond what's being said first and then the communication can start. So try to be the bigger person, but in order to do that, you're going to have to calm down first. You're going to have to let go of your anger. And if you can do this by praying, if you have a faith relationship with God, boy, that gives you a lot of strength in being able to listen because he can do things that we as human beings have a hard time doing on our own strength. So, so first, don't talk when you're angry. Second, try to listen and listen for the need. And then third, address that need. Address the person's need. And yes, praying in the Spirit is immensely helpful. Thank you, Andy. That was a great suggestion because if you pray while you're trying to communicate, your communication will be more powerful than what you can do on your own strength for certain. And plus, the Holy Spirit can help you tune in to that person's need better and get over your own emotions that will get in your way. So then... After you've done that, after you've refrained from being angry and prayed and listened with tenderness to what that person's need is under the surface and address that need, then you can approach them with the sandwich method. And I like to call it a skunk sandwich when I'm working with teenagers and kids because they can visualize it really well. You put lots of fluffy bread on the top. I know that you're a good person. I know you're a good parent. I know that you want to be the best 
whatever it is that you're trying to be, the best salesman you're trying to be. I can see your passion for X. Meet that person with their best qualities, with a big fluffy bread on the top of the sandwich. And then you get to the meat. Here's what I need. Here's what we need to accomplish together here. Here's our common ground that we need to get to. You tell them what your need is there. Then you're communicating your need. And then you end it with a big piece of fluffy bread on the bottom. You say, and I know that you're good and that we can work this out together and that you can come and meet me here and we can make a, a good team. So always fluffy bread on the top, meat in the middle. Sometimes it's stinky meat. Sometimes it's hard stuff to say. So that's why I call it a skunk sandwich because you're dealing with your emotions. This is how I feel and this is how, this is what I'm going to need here to get this through. And then the fluffy bread on the bottom. I know that you're a good person. I know that you're a good this and I know that you could do this for me and give them all the praise you can at the end. And then you will have an effective communication sandwich. So those are my four tips for bolstering your communications today. So I hope you have a happy Monday and a blessed rest of your week. And I hope this was helpful to you. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. And I look forward to seeing your comments when I post this on the blog. Have a great day. And it was so good to see you, Andy. Bye.